For the 92% of you who are watching these videos and haven't subscribed yet, what's stopping you? There's a button right there. Just click it. Today, we're going to look at the iHome SS50 5-in-1 sensor, which is motion, light, humidity, sound, and temperature, and it does work with Apple HomeKit. So one thing to be aware of when you're looking at the iHome overall smart products, double check to make sure that they're going to work with the ecosystem that you want them to. Um, we're going to show this a little later on, but iHome isn't exactly consistent with their smart home. So some, some products work with HomeKit, some don't, some work with um, Amazon or Google. So it's something you were definitely going to have to look at. And with that, let's take a look at what it looks like with HomeKit. So... I'm not going to go through the whole unboxing because this was actually one of my first products. And as you can see, this does motion, temperature, sunlight, sound, humidity. Works great with the iHome smart plugs, right? This is a, according to the box, looks like a fairly solid product. So one of the things that I first noticed about this is that it is not battery operated. So one of the things that I really wanted this for is I wanted a motion sensor. This is very early on and I wanted to be able to turn on um, both my Lutron lights or my Hue lights. And I couldn't because look at this. It is powered, always powered, needs to be plugged in. It is a micro USB interface. And so originally I wasn't happy about this because I bought it to be able to put it um, wherever I wanted to. And then I found that there is a long cable here. And I'm going to have to have this plugged in no matter where I use it. And there's going to be a cable trailing from it. So... Basically, that means that there's a lot of use cases where I'm not going to be able to use it, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad device. It just means that I have to figure out the right place to use it, and that's one thing to be um, paying attention. Unlike some of the other sensors out there, this actually has an embedded LED screen, so you can put this on a counter, you can put it um, in the dark, and you can see this, you can see it across the room, um, which is kind of nice. The other great thing about this is because it is plugged in, if you have a, a second home or a cabin or chalet, whatever we want to call them, um, this will always be running as long as you've got electricity there, right? So that's one of the advantages. It's not like something like a Elgato Eve room, for instance, where you have to change the batteries every six months um, and you don't quite know when that period is. So let's take a look at the iPad app now. So I've got this placed in my kitchen, so we're going to go over there. And as you can see, we've got the... Um, a bunch of sensors in here. So I've actually got a laser egg, which I use in my kitchen and I actually move it around a lot. But the iHome, um, the five in one stays there. Temperature sensor, temperature sensor works, right? No, no, uh, nothing here. It seems to be accurate. Seems to be in line with um, the, the rest of the temperature sensors, sensors around the house. If you've been here before, you kind of know what the sen sensors look like, so I'm not really going to go into those too much. But what you'll notice is not here, for instance, is the sound sensor, which is kind of interesting, is this doesn't get exposed directly to the native Apple Home app. But if we go over to third-party Home app, and we look here, there we go, you can see that we now have full the humidity, the light, the motion, the temperature, the sound, all of that is now available for us within this third-party Home app. Um, so I will try to put a link in this. This is something, an app, I think it's like $10 or something like that. It has been just amazing for me to be able to access things which otherwise I might not have been able to access. For instance, if I want to do something to say, let's let's create a scenario here where I want the kitchen lights to turn on just a little bit at night, um, assuming they're not already on. So I can create an event that says, okay, my accessory state if my sound, so we're going to go find the iHome here. If sound is in fact detected, then I'm going to perform an action. So what could I do? I could create a scene here, which is highly recommended. But just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to go straight to the accessory. So we're again going to scroll down. We're going to go to the kitchen and find that kitchen main light. There we go. Okay, we're in the kitchen now, kitchen main. We're going to select that. We're going to turn the power state on and turn the brightness up to, let's say, 20%. So we don't want it to be blinding us at night. So we're just going to turn it on just a little bit if it's not already on. And click Done. So now we've defined when the sound goes, what's going to happen. We want to add in conditionals here because we don't want this to be actually happening all the time. We want it to be happening 
perhaps after um, sunset, right? So we're going to say, okay, after sunset, so at night, that's when, when a sound goes off, we're going to turn the lights on. So there we go, under the condition of at night. Now we're going to add a secondary accessory state here, which is, again, my second conditional. At night, if the light is off, then we're going to turn it on. But if the light's already on, then don't do anything. So we're going to make sure that the power state here is off. We're going to click done. Wait a couple seconds for this to catch up. There we go. You can see the power state there is off. And I can also see that I screwed something up before. So I said I wanted to turn it on to 20%, right? And I actually didn't click that second button there. So that was the mistake I made previously. So now that that's fixed, we can see that the power state, time of day at night, power state is off. So if those things are true, if so if you hear sound, if the power state is for the main light is currently off, and if it's after sunrise, then turn on the light. Now we're going to do our last undo action, which says after 10 minutes, I want you to turn it back off. And then we enable the trigger. So now if we go back over to the Apple Home app, we can see all the results of our hard work. I still find this amusing that we can check it in the Apple Home native app, but we can't actually set it up. So as you can see, if the kitchen sound detector changes only at night and only if the kitchen main is off, then we're going to turn it on and we're going to turn it off again with the undo action after 10 minutes. So now we can go over to the iHome. Let's take a quick little tour of their specific application. So we're going to go over back to the room and then we'll just click on any of our iHome 5-in-1 uh, sensors here and we can just say click open that app directly and go directly there which is always kind of a nice touch as we can get directly from any sensor into the manufacturer's app where you will get some of um, additional functionality potentially. So this is, it's not one of my favorite apps, I'll tell you that. Um, it hasn't been updated in a couple years. It still looks a little, I don't know, I just, personally, I just don't like the look of the app. But it's functional. Um, we have the ability to check for updates here, so we can make sure there. We can see all of our settings there. We can change our thresholds for light, sound, motion. We've got our units. If you are in uh, Celsius or in Freedom units, right? Either one of those is going to be great. You can change the sound threshold. So is it high, highly sensitive, medium, or um, low? And this will affect the occupancy. And then you've also got the occupancy threshold um, timer there. So you're going to be able to affect, you know, how often does it actually test? And as this thing triggered, which is kind of nice. So you're going to have to play with that a little bit to get things to be exactly what you want, but it does work and it does give you some um, additional flexibility. One of the things that I am not a fan of about this particular sensor is there is no way to do historical tracking that I have found it, at least yet in the current app. And this is in, um, what is it, uh, March, just the beginning of March 2018 right now. I can't track over time the thresholds of what was happening of temperature or sound or things like that events from a historical standpoint. So that's definitely a drawback of the Apple um, ecosystem home kit in general. And it's usually one that's dealt with in the vendor's specific app, but not in the case of iHome. So that is something to be aware of here. So if we go over to the rules section here, again, this is interesting. These are not home kit rules at all. These are rules specifically for the five-in-one sensor, although it can work with the plugs, um, the iHome specific plugs. And one of the nice things here, which is not available in HomeKit, is receive sensor notifications. So if something happens, you can actually get a sensor through the, um, or a notification through the iHome app, which is nice. So continuing on our little tour, we have sensors, which you can see iHome has um, released a a series of sensors. So you've got a motion sensor. These are battery operated Wi-Fi. So I'm not sure what the, um, long term, uh, the battery lifetime of these would be, I suspect not that great. But they don't work with HomeKit, which is kind of a problem. So if you are all in on iHome, I'm sure these would be fantastic products. Um, for me, I don't even want to try them, because it means that I have no choice, no ability to do anything other than iHome. And they simply don't have enough um, smart home products in their ecosystem at this time for me to even consider that. So something to be aware of is these, the door and window sensors we've got, the um, motion sensors, 
available from iHome. Just because HomeKit is supported on one of their products doesn't mean it's supported everywhere. And to really prove that point, I wanted to go over here to settings and look and at the third-party products. And if you look at the partner system, this looks actually really good. You've got um, Ift, you've got Google Assistant, you've got Wink, SmartThings, Nest, um, Amazon, Apple HomeKit. It's a very, very varied support, right? That's good. I love that. But if we go into the products themselves and look at them, that story starts to change a little bit. For instance, if I scroll down here and click on the battery powered sensors, There's no third party connections. They don't actually appear to work with anything other than the iHome control app, which is fine as long as you know that. If we go in the iHome, um, the five in one sensor, which we're looking at right now, it only works with HomeKit and Wink. And if we go over back to the plugs, you can see they basically work with just about everybody out there, which is um, pretty impressive. I really wish iHome had done that with all of these products rather than kind of fragmenting and choosing on a per product basis what ecosystem they're gonna support. And with that, let's wrap things up. So the overall review here is know what you're gonna use this for. If you go in thinking this is gonna be a wireless product that you can put anywhere as a motion sensor, you will be disappointed. But if you wanna use this for a long-term um, cabin where you don't have to worry about the batteries, things like that, this is probably a great choice for you. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. The thumbs up, likes are always appreciated. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about making your house just a little bit smarter with Apple HomeKit, there is a coupon code below.